Hi, it's V with Crafting Daily Dose. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm sharing a pop-up card using the Cheerful Basket stamp set. You can find a link to the blog post with measurements as well as the supply list in the description box below. So let's take a closer look at this card. We've got some bling on the front and then we've got this box with a flap on it. And then on the inside, a pop-up box with even more of those hearts. I'll show you step-by-step step how to create this card, so let's get started. Okay, here are the pieces that we're using. The card base this time is basic white thick cardstock, and it is eight and a half inches across, five and a half inches in height, scored down the middle here at four and a quarter inches. Then I've got two layers for the front. The bottom layer is Melon Mambo cardstock, and it's four inches by five and a quarter inches. Then I have a piece of regular basic white cardstock that is three and seven eighths of an inch by five and one eighths of an inch. Now you can get away with using just one additional layer, or you could even stamp directly onto the card base itself. Having the two layers though gives it a more finished look and also the extra weight of that helps to keep the card closed since there's a pop-up mechanism on the inside. So then let's talk about that mechanism. This is the piece that's going to form the pop-up box on the inside and it's crumb cake cardstock that is eight inches by three inches. It's been scored along the long side at two inches, four inches, and six inches. And then along the short side, it's been scored at one inch. So that goes all the way across horizontally. The smaller piece of crumb cake cardstock is going to be the insert in the pop-up that gives us a second layer for our images. This piece is four inches by three quarters of an inch, and it's been scored at one half, two, and three and a half inches. This piece is for decoration. It forms the flat box on the front of the card, and it is two inches across, three inches in height, and it's been scored at one inch along the long side. Now, here's my piece of designer series paper. I'm using the Hues of Happiness paper, and on one of the pieces, there's this nice gradation of color. I'm using this so that I can stamp directly onto the designer series paper. That's going to save me time because I won't have anything to color. The color comes from the paper itself. I'm using the Cheerful Basket stamp set, You Fill My Day with Happiness, and this cluster of hearts here. I'm stamping with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm also using Crumb Cake ink with a sponge dauber. I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending onto the pieces that form the box just to add a little extra interest. And then I'll be finishing things off with some bling using the Iridescent Rhinestones Basic Jewels. And now we're ready to get started. I'll start with stamping, and this is the plain basic white layer that's going to go on the front of the card. I want to stamp my sentiment up here towards the top. And to figure out placement, I'm going to put these pieces down so that I can gauge what kind of space I have left. So this is the decorative box for the front. All I'm doing here is folding it along that score line because this is going to be like the flap of the box. So that's going to go towards the bottom here. And then this is the stamp that I'm using. I'm making sure that it's clean. There's some staining on it, but no fresh ink, and it's not going to affect anything. This is going to be tucked down here so it looks like the hearts are coming out of that box, like so. And so then I know this space is where I can put the sentiment. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I've got my silicone craft sheet underneath for some cushion. Now I'll take that stamp and mount it onto my clear block and I'll get ready to use it. I'm aiming to stamp it kind of where the transition in color is so that there's a little bit of variety. I'll need at least three here and I may end up stamping some partial ones to fill in space if there are gaps later when I go to assemble the card. Now when you go to cut out these hearts, you're going to want to leave a little tab on the bottom. If you're doing that by hand, then that is pretty straightforward. You're just going to cut 
oh, about a half an inch or so below the bottom edge of that image. And then you'd go back and fussy cut or trim out the image around the heart. Now, if you're using a die like I am, then you're going to want to line up the die, but only do a partial cutting. So what this means is that you're going to put it on the bottom cutting plate there. But when you go to put the top plate on, you're not going to cover up the whole thing. You're only going to cover up part of it. This part down here at the bottom border of the die is not going to be covered up. That means that when you run this through your machine, this part is not going to have enough pressure on it to cut. So the outline around the hearts is going to cut, but this part won't. And so here's what that result looks like. This top part has been cut out, but it stops where that top plate was not covering, and this part is still intact. So now I can come back in with my scissors, and I'm going to look for this part here, and I'm gonna just cut straight up to that point, and finish trimming off around here. And again, I'm looking for this point here, just going to trim up from there and trim off the excess. And so that's how you create the tab. And I'll do all of the pieces in that same way. And now we'll work on the boxes. This is that smaller piece that's the decorative box for the front. And I'm just going to fold it along that score line. This part is going to be glued down flat to the card, and then this part is going to remain raised up to look like the flap on the box. And I'm just going to take my snips, and I'm going to cut out a little wedge on both sides. Just a small triangle. I'm not even measuring here. It's probably maybe an eighth of an inch in, but I'm just eyeballing it. So you can see what that looks like there. Now I have my crumb cake ink pad and I'm just going to take my dauber and tap very lightly on the edge there. Just swirl in a little bit of color along the edges. I love using the same color of ink as the cardstock because you know that it's going to match perfectly. It's subtle, but it gives the look of dimension. It's always better to start off light because you can always add more ink, but it's not very easy to take it away. I'm doing both sides of the flap because both sides can be seen. Now here's the piece that is the box for the inside. These three vertical score lines are all going to be mountain folds. So I'm folding them away. And then this long horizontal score line is going to be a valley fold towards me. Now I'll go back and reinforce that with my bone folder, but this way I can at least more easily see where the score lines are so that I can cut off two of these pieces. So we're cutting off these two smaller corner panels right here. Here's what our piece looks like so far. There's still one more score line here that separates these two short panels. And now I've created two more box flaps by doing that. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut little wedges into these just like I did for the front. I'm going to actually make these maybe a little bit bigger so that they don't interfere with the card opening and closing. You can see that I cut out larger wedges this time compared to what was for the front. So these are closer to a quarter of an inch for the pieces on the inside. I'll move those pieces out of the way. And then I'm ready to do some ink blending on this. Now these two parts here are going to be glued to the card itself so that we're really only going to see these two pieces of the box. So I only have to worry about putting ink onto these. I don't have to bother with the ones on the end. I'm doing a combination of little swirls and then just sometimes rubbing that ink on. And again, I'm doing both sides of the flaps. We're ready to start assembling. Here is the little box for the front and then one of my heart clusters. I'm going to glue this behind the box so that it looks like those hearts are coming out. And obviously this is longer than what I need. So I'm going to trim off this part here. I'll save the extras though because I can add them to the inside. Here's the insert for the box. It's got those two score lines near the end, so I'm folding them back as mountain folds, and it also has the score line down here in the middle. That's also a mountain fold. Now I've got another cluster of hearts, and I'm going to glue this behind the insert, like so. This is our second layer, so I want it to stand nice and tall, so I'm going to glue it to make sure that I'm seeing the whole image. Now, just to test to make sure that nothing's going to interfere with the pop-up mechanism, I'm going to hold these glue tabs to the back. And what I'm checking for here is to make sure that the edge of my image does not go past this edge here. So I can use my finger and hold it up as a guide. There's a gap, and so that's not gonna cause any interference when my card is opening and closing. And this other side is safe as well because this is not past this edge. Now, if you're using the same stamp set as me, you're going to know that it will fit since we're doing it here together. But I also wanted to make sure you knew what to check for if you're experimenting with using other images. Once that glue has set, I'm going to go ahead and fold it along this center score line. And in doing so, I'm also going to end up folding my cluster of hearts here. So one advantage of using the designer series paper to stamp on, besides the fact that it's an easy way to add color, is that this is going to be thinner than our cardstock, so it's not going to add too much extra bulk, and it's nice and easy to fold without making a score line. I've got one more cluster of hearts, and I'm going to use what I cut off from before, and I'll add it to this one just to lengthen this piece. This is going to go behind the main pop-up box right here. And I'm going to let this one sit a little bit lower. Now, once again, I want to fold back the gluing tabs. This time we have the large gluing tabs. 
and I'm checking to make sure that the edge of this is not past the edge of the box and you can clearly see that it's not. If you wanted to, you could stamp out extra hearts and fill in some of that space, but I like it the way that it is, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll go ahead and add glue here. Okay, now this piece is ready as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and turn it over. So now we're looking at the back side. Just going to put these flaps like this so it can lay down straighter. And I'm going to bring in the insert that we just worked on. Now on these gluing tabs here on the end, I'm going to cut a tiny wedge at the top. This gives me a little margin of error. Even if my pieces are not perfectly aligned when I go to glue them together, I'm not going to have a part that pokes out since I'm cutting away a little wedge. Now I'm also going to turn this upside down and I'm going to line up the centers of these two pieces. I'm also lining up the top edge here with the top edge of this box, not counting the flap. Now I'm taking the glue tab and I'm folding it back. In this case, I'm folding it up towards me because we're looking at the back side. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on that. All the way to the crease and all the way to the edges. Now I'll take the flap from the larger box and I'm going to go ahead and fold it onto that. So folding it right onto the exposed glue. That looks good. Now for the other side. So I'm making sure that the top edge of this is lined up with the top edge here. Again, not counting the flap. I'll pull back the gluing tab and add some glue to it. That looks good. I'll show it to you from the front. You can see once these flaps are down, our box looks like it's full of hearts. Now we've got one more thing to check before this goes into the cart. Let's look at the back again. I want to make sure that these two gluing tabs here don't overlap with one another. And you can see that on mine it does. See how this left one overlaps with the one on the right? I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. That looks good. Now the two pieces come together and there's no overlap. You'd rather err on the side of having a little bit of a gap rather than having an overlap. Here's our card base and we're ready to install our box. So I'm opening this up and I'm going to go ahead and put this in. I'm going to place mine at the bottom of the card. Just going to pick one side and put glue on it. And I'm lining up, lining up this edge with the center crease of the card. Now I will go ahead and fold my box along this middle crease. 
So here's what that looks like. And now I will go ahead and put glue on this other side. Now fold the back of the card onto that and let that set up. Now let's test and open the card. That looks good. We just have to make sure that these flaps are bent down. And there you go. Now when you go to close up the card, in the beginning you're going to have to train these little flaps here so that they stay nice and flat. If you find that they are interfering with your card being able to open and close, then you might trim a slightly larger wedge. And now we're finishing up with the front. It's always good to sneak a quick peek and make sure that you're not putting this on upside down. And finally, don't forget about those iridescent jewels. There's our finished card. We've got that pretty iridescence from the jewels on the outside, and we already have some dimension. And of course, that wonderful pop-up on the inside. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this dose of creativity. If you get a chance to try this project, I would love to see it. So share it in my Facebook group or tag me if you're sharing elsewhere. I hope to see you again next time. And until then, have a great day.